Hello YouTube, Matthew Taylor here. Tonight I will be doing a swap of two motors on a Diatone Taycan. The reason why I'm recording this is I'm just trying to find an excuse to put my GoPro Hero 9 Black to use. And show off, I guess, my quote unquote lack of um, soldering skills. But I have two I have two Diatone Mamba motors that I'll be replacing in my friend's Diatone Taycan 6S model. This would have been these these I don't know if you can see these motors um, in question. Unfortunately he had a mishap in which one or two motors had died, so he had purchased um, these motors online. And we're going to now go through the process of replacing them. I guess this is the time I'll probably do a quick shout out to racedayquads.com who typically would um, stock these particular motors and also to the Diatone Taycan unit. So let's, so these are what the motors themselves look like coming out of the packaging. That one typically makes good products. 1606. Let's see if this can, if we can focus. 1606, 2700 KV. Well, it should be 2700 KV for 6S. Let's actually get that checked out. But, alas. So the motors come with with a sorted set of screws or um, bolts rather. <clears throat> of course, use my trusty race day quad um, Allen key set or hex set as it, it'll call it. So motor one, motor two. Let's see, these are the motors in question. If you're curious and want to look this up online, so I have the soldering iron, I have the flux, soldering iron bought from racedayquads.com, flux bought from racedayquads.com, not a, it's not a, a racedayquads promotion. However, I just found it quite coincidental that all these parts just happen to come from this particular supplier. All right, this is the quad in question. I see he has been doing some amount of landscaping work, cutting the grass. In the process, in a previous episode, I had burnt up a motor, I had replaced I'd subsequently replaced this motor and as such with that in mind it's time to swap this motor put this back to the original aka new um, stuff in, in container and this one which has completely burnt out so let's get the process started first we're gonna first we're gonna start by pulling this frame apart which Involves. Let's get this. Take this strap off. Get this out of the way. This particular unit only requires the 1.5 millimeter hex driver, aka Allen key for those of you out there. I can imagine it's in the comments now. All right, let's speed this up.
All right, so the process took a little longer than originally anticipated. So here it is with the top plate removed. Let's see if you can see anything here. All right, so top plate removed. We'll now go through the process of taking this, the rest of this frame off. What a design. I'm not bored with this. All right, so I have actually gotten this out. All right, so got those two out of the way. We actually now have the motor wiring exposed. I'm going to go through the process of desoldering these one by one <clears throat> and pulling this out from the stack. Take the opportunity to pull this, these props off, give us some wiggle room to move. So the symptoms that were experienced with this particular quad was that the quad would just twitch. It just stays there and twitches and that's all it literally does. All day long, all day long. So I'm gonna place this on pause for a moment while I heat up the soldering iron again. Soldering iron is the Sequoia SQ001, I believe. Let me heat this up. Watch it burn all the way up to 400 degrees Celsius. I prefer using Celsius and Fahrenheit. I am obsessed with metric everything. Metric. So soldering iron heats up on using a China hobby line battery heat up heat up all right ready shaking off the solder that I had on there before now let me flip this over This portion. Doing this and watching the camera at the same time is very, very tedious. So out. <sighs> I 
help when these melt just like butter. What's important to take the opportunity to clean your soldering tip periodically. Folks will have various conflicting methods of doing it. For me, a damp sponge works works great. That is that. And let's pull the last one. All right, great. I'll switch the soldering iron off. Park that safely. Don't burn ourselves up. So the quad is still hold held in place right now by. I mean, the motors are still held in place by their motor screws. Let us pull these motors off. One, one screw out. Next, screw out two. Let us do this three. That's one motor out of out of the way and done. Put that down. Next motor. So this is one of those no trick edit um, videos. No editing for this video. It will just be uploaded raw. Nothing spliced. Nothing cut and spiced together. Pull that out. The only editing going on here, well, the well, the, the GoPro in or speeding up the boring parts of the video. Although most of you, some folks, me. All right, so both motors are now, sorry, both motors are now out. Hold one minute. All right, so new motor time. This is where we take the opportunity to take a look at the length of both motors and realize that the length of the wiring is different between the two so both motors lined up here but wiring is different of different lengths so part that No need to have wiring excessively longer than it absolutely needs to be. So, I'm going to thread, thread, thread these three wires. Well, I'm showing these three wires through this hole right here, which is going to be tricky doing this on camera, but just bear with me. But I do it. Huh, I'm sure you all would definitely like and subscribe if it was a Joshua Bardwell doing this or a Lev Drib or hmm, who knows, possibly Mr. Steel. Alright, so get one motor in. And when I say in just Pull out this way and let's secure it. Take one screwdriver, one sc one bolt. Oh, 
Oh, take the opportunity. Yeah, I should take the opportunity to shout out Flying Kings, the FPV group of Jamaica. Here, where I have um, some good old fashioned bashing, drone racing, obstacle FPV. Um, the radix here. Tighten that. Snug that down. Snug that down. Snug that down. And snug that down. No, under normal circumstances, I would have actually put Loctite on all of these. On all of these motors, but because I did not get permission from the owner, to, did not seek permission from the owner to do so. I will leave that out of this particular build. Now let's get the other screw. I mean the other Motorola. One day I'll start doing one of those no trick tutorial videos. I mean there, there's this um there is this individual I've start started started start <coughs> Sorry, I am severely dehydrated. Yeah, I have not been consuming water all day today. Yeah, there's this one particular individual I've been following on YouTube who does, I, I keep forgetting his, his actual name. It, he goes, he does some no talking uh, trick, NTT, no talking trick tutorials, which I find pretty insightful. Um, Enlightening. I'll probably let me post a link to his page in the video description. Just trying to thread these. Just trying to thread these three motor wires through that hole. Again, pretty tricky doing this on camera. I mean, looking at trying to look at the camera while doing it doing it through the camera that's all right well if you like what you're seeing so far like and subscribe or as joshua bardwell says just keep watching um if even if that's all you can do All right, got one held in place. All right, I want to speed this process up so as not to bore you watching me put four bolts through four screw holes in a, in a motor. So I had to just go through the process here of taking out one motor screw and threading it through this last hole here. Okay, you can now see all four motor all four motor screws have been more four motor bolts rather. Keep swapping the non commature off. All right. Screws and bolts. All right, here we go. So, what's left to be done now is to simply solder the four wires, I mean, three wires on each motor back onto the shaft, which I will cut the wires to 
the wiring to appropriate length and then tin them yeah, cut them to appropriate length tin them and then put them right back on on there like so let me get a pair of clippers so i don't have a fancy pair of um wire snippers on me so what i'm going to do good old-fashioned nail clipper that gives a nice consistent clean cut in life we just sometimes have to improvise as a wise man once said so looking at this i think this should be long enough let's look at this long enough long enough three two one yeah why not let's cut it just a little longer Yeah, this is gonna be terribly long, but snip that. Now this is the opportunity to take a look at um, the fact that these wires are so thin, they're the equivalent of servo wires. But I guess this is what we get. <clears throat> um, yeah, for the motors we. we would purchase well, I can say um, having flown this particular quad this is this is clearly not my quad however I have flown it um, I guess what once or twice before and the uh, motors actually did feel pretty good, considering. I mean, these motors would have been were designed to run on 6S, so 6S it will be. I'm just pulling off the insulation off of these. I'm going to speed up this process so as not to bore you. All right, so what I, what I should have explained earlier with what I was actually doing here is that I had stripped off the insulation off of these motors, which is which is indeed standard practice in the hobby, where we would just simply gently using a, you could either use your fingernail and pull on the silicone wire thank goodness this is actually good quality silicone insulation what i did is just gently um gently pinched on it with the nail clipper and then pulled off the tip just enough so for me to be able to wet this up with some sorrow and we'll get this rolling so i'm just twisting the ends so i'm going to tin this i'm going to dip this in some flux And then heat up the soldering iron again, tin it, and then we just solder it. Uh, some of these are too long, so let me snip this excess off. Yeah, there is a there is a downside sometimes in keeping these two long one of my next investments will be a compatible camera so it, uh, my voice doesn't sound so weird or spooky from behind the microphone or behind the camera in this case because I'm currently using a GoPro here and then to record record all this and as such the cameras the microphones appear to be 
front um, forward facing. So let me get to tinning this again. So this is my flux of choice. This is some really sticky stuff. So how I how I typically just do this in flux, I just just drop it on there, drop it in there, get on there flux away. In the past, I did not give a flux, and it is spelled F. Here we go, flux F L U X right there. I did not use any in incorrect words. F L U X was the word I just used a while ago. But soldering iron time. All right, so now that we're not boring you with with this so far, I know what to get. Oh man, bit of solder and solder this up. Sorry, my GoPro had overheated and switched off very embarrassing it has been happening too frequently now so if it does not get any airflow overheat embarrassing let's do this So that is that's tinning this stuff. All right, so let's see. Yeah, let's see, this is doing. All right, so tinned. All right, no. So this is the part where in which we now commit to actually soldering up everything i'm going to do everything here from left to right well partially partially because i am right i am right-handed but it's easier for me to hold the soldering iron in this manner let me hold this wire like this Is that that's one wiggle test that's not going anywhere once it has been sufficiently tinned yep ain't going anywhere that's the second one. Let's do the third. Oh no, to get light, I'm going to speed up the process so you don't, you're not bored by me doing the rest during the other four.
All right, so this is where the soldering process is done here. I would not say this is this is not certainly not my any of my best soldering job. Embarrassing, a little bit of embarrassing to say, but under the circumstances, I'm trying to look through the camera and that sound is me cleaning the tip of my soldering iron just in case you all are wondering what's going on in the background there. All right, so let me clear this now. I'm gonna put this on hold one second while I grab my grab my phone and try to test this motor. So contrary to what I had said earlier, oh goodness, I'd set the white balance on my GoPro. So this screen on my laptop appears yellow when it should not be. When it actually should be white. Oh, also to my, yeah. So what I've done is I've actually tested this off air, but let me test this on camera for you all to see that it works. Um, what had happened what had to happen because i did not have the right angle usb connector i had to end up pulling off the right side as well the ducts on the right side so those are actually loose right now pulled pull that pull that and let's make this yeah so Right, so at 109 microseconds, all four motors are spinning. Those are spinning. Those are spinning. Those are spinning. And those are spinning. You might not depending on the refresh rate my gopro is running recording at 50 hertz the refresh rate you might not necessarily see the motor spinning what it actually is all right so it's very consistent now this way i'm gonna now have to put this uh, i'm gonna now take the time to put this back together so that you can see that this is whole once again and it works and flies. It is for me to now check to ensure that the motors are spinning in the right direction. So this goes this way. So motor three has to go in the other direction, has to be reversed. Motor one is right. Yeah, so this is motor three, that's actually wrong. So I'm gonna just do this in swap this in BL Heli S to get motor to get motor three swapped around the correct direction and then take you guys through the process uh, take you all through the process of putting it back together. All right, so here we are. You've gone through the process of setting <clears throat> of setting this back up. So you've seen that the unit actually does function. The motor is actually soldered up 
properly they do turn I just drop the screw very embarrassing hold on drop the screw off camera found the same screw I just dropped off camera reinserting screw once again All right, so this is the part I totally dislike about these ducted whoops putting this all back together now so assembly is the reverse of um, this assembly so I'm gonna speed this up All right, so this is the base of the right side done. Let's get to the base of the left side. All right, so with the way this base was sort of put together, it feels sort of like, okay, trying to pinch and hold. I'm gonna have to get a pair of pliers, which is unorthodox to get to hold onto the knurled portion. Hold while I get a pair of pliers. Be flowers while I hold onto this. I'm 
I'm trying to kind of do keep this on camera. Snug that portion down. All right, so that feels sort of like a quad again. Hold this. Sorry, just trying to just currently holding on to the standoffs while I with a pair of bird beak pliers while I give them a nice gentle twist. Right, twist. Alright, so screws back in place. So this is the base portion. And so the top actually goes goes in place so easily that just making doubly sure one last oh sorry I did not realize I had a <clears throat> light out of out of view ensuring everything is back where it should be all right So just to put this top portion back on, I'll speed this up, not to bore you with these particular details. Let's tighten this down. Let's tighten this. So with with this particular cinewhoop it requires the top plate to be able to keep the actual rigidity of the actual structure frame here now this is a lot of turning a lot of screwing cool oh, somebody sponsored one of your one of those fancy motorized electric screwdrivers can make this process much Less time consuming. Get the process done. Pat up front. Down up front. Sorry, folks, very cognizant of trying not to breathe into the camera. I would have used the 
just the GoPro mount. However, the one thing with that is that you would want to catch with that rather is that you'd see too much shaking as I work. So this would be the so after this long this last bolt, this would be the quad ready to rumble literally. Ready to go fly. <sighs> That's it. So from start to finish, replacing two motors on one quad. Someone somewhere would have gone and taken the much easier step of just pulling, sorry, pulling the four motors, desoldering the motor wires, sorry, desoldering the motor wires here, uh, all six on this side, and simply pulling the wires through and pushing the wires, pulling the wires um, out pulling the motor out and then to be doing the reverse by putting the new motor pushing the new motor wires through uh cutting them to length and soldering them here and then bolt the motors back bolt the motor back in place but in hindsight i could have gone that particular method however i would have wanted to get ample Boy, you know, in hindsight, yeah, I might as well. Um, could have done that, but to be honest, I don't really want to pull stuff apart. Prefer ample room to work, and ultimately, what I'd really want to get is access to this micro USB port on this side. Let's see if you can see it any better. Here, the way it is positioned, but the annoying part is this particular duct gets in the way of that. So, with Cinewhoops, I prefer to just pull the ducts out, get to do what needs to be done, and then put it all back together. It's a matter of personal preference. It took much longer this way, but at least I know it works and will fly i just now need to put the props back on which is a trivial matter can be done off camera so this is a uh, moment where i say please remain safe do the necessary social distancing and we're all in this together have a good one